we do want to get to our first live guest this morning, and it's certainly been a stressful few weeks, whether or not you've been watching the news or just helping your kids transition from school back to summer break. So we want to take some time to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves at first. Nicole Walters is joining us live. She's the owner of Ahava Collective over in Greensboro, and she has some of those self soothing techniques to show us this morning. Nicole, thank you for being here. Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me. Well, as we were talking about some of those stressful situations and the heat related illnesses that are coming through, it is just a high energy time and something we need to be aware of as we're moving through these next few months. So what exactly is self soothing and why can that be so important for us to have as one of those tools in our in our wheelhouse? Self-soothing, it's an emotional regulation practice. So there's a variety of techniques that we can use and it's really important for us to have it um, because, uh, you know, we, I myself, I can get a little dependent on outside things to comfort and soothe me. Um, and it's been really helpful for me to kind of identify what self-soothing techniques are like. And, you know, a lot of us, we hear this uh, term self soothing when it relates to children like when kids are when babies are crying and learning to let them like comfort themselves otherwise every time they cry they're going to expect someone to come and pick them up so there's kind of a thin line and balance in finding like what's appropriate and I think it's definitely an individual thing of course that definitely makes sense but what happens when you are in a stressful situation you know that you need to do something to sort of bring your energy back to a more centered place how can you make sure that you are self-soothing enough and what happens if you don't address the issue when it's happening so my experience has been not addressing self-soothing techniques um, has created um, emotional disruption so for instance um, there's been many times um, where I have been emotionally dysregulated in a professional situation or uh, a friendship or relation a relational uh, situation. And emotions can get disruptive when I'm not consistently taking care of, you know, my nervous system and how I regulate them. Um, and I always like to tell people what happens for me and for a lot of us is we tend to make a very permanent decision on what's really a temporary emotion. So that's kind of what could happen, the possibilities of happening. But it also, at, by practicing um, self-soothing techniques, we're creating you know, a wholeness within ourselves, um, sort of a trust and a communication with our own body where you know, the goal is to be less judgmental. Fear, anger, worry, anxiety, these are all very common responses to life, as you said, things that are going on in the world. Um, and learning how to meet them with love and compassion in a kind way to ourselves, that's where self-soothing is gonna give us the most benefit. And Nicole, I know you have some of those examples of how we can practice self-soothing. Can you sort of jump into a few of those now? Yeah, so a few that I find that are most helpful for myself, you could try. Um, so I'll start, I kind of have a little list here from the bottom up. So one that's really good, a lot of people enjoy this, but it has to be in the right circumstance. Literally taking a shower or washing your face really helps to reset the nervous system. You know, and for me, it kind of makes me feel like, okay, I'm just going to start this entire day over and wash my hair, you know. Um, and then another one is literally changing the scenery. Like you could just walk out of the room that you're in, take a few deep breaths and just incorporate the change of energy in the environment. Another one is we breathe. We always talk about breathing techniques, but we can add things into that breathing. So listening to soft, comforting music while taking breaths might help to um, calm the nervous system as well. Um, and my favorite one, well, two of my favorite ones, obviously like creating movement. Like for me, when I get stressed, my body tenses up and you know, it's like that energy doesn't have anywhere to go. So stretching, taking a gentle walk or a brisk walk, those are all ways to reset. My personal favorite is doing sort of a self um, soothing touch, like a facial massage, neck, shoulder, and literally giving myself a hug. That's like one of the most comforting things that I've learned to do. That seems like some key points. Thank you so much, Nicole, for joining us. I always feel like your tips are something that can help us all get through our work week just a little bit smoother than if we didn't have them. Thank you again for joining us. And of course, you can see a schedule of classes and learn more about the collective at that website there on your screen, ahava-collective.com.